Hey, welcome back to Clep's Garage. This is uh, part two of the 59 Chrysler Saratoga uh, restoration, or I guess you just call it getting it back to drivable condition. We're not really restoring it, 100 point show car or anything. We're just getting it so we can drive it down the road, have a little fun. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna show you what we had to do to the brakes, the suspension, and uh, we started cleaning up the paint. We're gonna try to keep the original paint. We're gonna try to blend our uh, new sheet metal in to get that uh, to match and try to keep this a, an original piece somewhat. Uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's coming up. You'll see that and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Well, uh, we're looking at the uh, the Chrysler. Since we've got the body work all done, the brakes were <laughs> marginal at best. Uh, I've done some research. This has got a funky setup we'll show you here in a minute. Uh, it's got two wheel cylinders on each wheel and uh, parts are like non-existent. You can't even buy a rubber hose. So I've done some checking. They make a disc. Two people make a disc brake conversion setup, and uh, so I started tearing this apart today. I've ordered the conversion kit, and I started tearing it apart. The other side came apart real easy. This side, the brakes are kind of out of against the drum. So I have this contraption now. This is really cool. If you've never seen one of these, if you have old cars, you have to have old tools. This is actually made for the rear hub to get the rear hub off of a, a tapered shaft. So it'll work on here. So it bolts onto the, the the lug nuts. Then it has this little funky thing here. And well, this is gonna, usually you hit this with a hammer. This is fun part. Bang the crap out of it and it'll pop the drum. This drum uh, looks like it's gonna come off fairly easy. I'm probably gonna run out of stuff here maybe. So hopefully we can get this off. Whew, boy, it's a lot of work. Good thing I got my libation handy. <laughs> you know, I took a break on the other side cause it was just too much work. Went out and got some munchies and you know, stuff like that. Makes the day go better. Once we get uh, libations, then I can get some strength to pull this off. I'm like Popeye. Let's see if I got any more strength now. <laughs> this ought to be funny. I bet it still don't come off. Probably need the whole car off the damn jack stand. Well, that ain't gonna work. So, we'll do it this way. Uh, well, anyhow, I put a socket in here to give me some more room here. Maybe I am going to be able to hit this with a hammer. It's pretty tight. Or not. God, a pain in the butt. I'll be glad to change this over to disc brakes, that's for sure. Pete, Pete. That's going to be hard the whole way off. Now zoom in there and look at this crap. Talk about crap. Got a wheel cylinder here and a wheel cylinder here. I bet that's real fun to bleed those. Anyhow, we're going to take these off. Uh, go around to the other side and show them what the other side looks like. I've already got it done. So we're down to just the spindle, cleaning it. And uh, the new kit will just bolt onto this spindle and uh, we'll put new rotors on it calipers and new rubber hoses and we'll have a disc brake conversion. So this isn't cooperating at all. I've got uh, there's four bolts here. There's nuts on the back side. We got the nut completely off this side. I used Mr. Air Ratchet. We're going to go up to Big Mo here and see if this will do anything. This helps I put it on reverse. so you can hear. So we got all four bolts out. Had to get big mo out here to get it. So we've got the uh, the vacuum plate here that comes off like this. Now at this point here you want to be careful because uh, on an old car usually if these are old linings they're actually made out of asbestos which is bad. Now as long as you don't disturb this you can put water or a clean fluid on and clean it. You're okay. This part in here is just grease. So we're going to take this part outside let the rain wash it off. It's raining today. And uh, we're going to bag this and keep it, I don't know why, but we're going to keep it around with the original drum in case somebody else wants the original setup. So anyhow, we're going to get rid of the asbestos problems.
Shane done a pretty good job cleaning these up. Uh, this one here is a little dirtier, not bad. This one's pretty decent. But there you can see the, uh, the two different uh, wheel cylinders, one for each shoe. Apparently that was Chrysler's better idea back in the day. It was supposed to keep you stopping straight instead of veering off to the left or the right. It probably worked fine, but um, I can't get the parts at a reasonable price that I want to play with, so we're just going to change them. And uh, like I said, this has got probably the old asbestos brake lining on there. That even looks like asbestos, uh, which can cause cancer. You don't want to breathe the dust off of any of that, so that's why they let the rain wash all this off. Now we'll go ahead and see what Ted's doing. He's cleaning the, uh, the Chrysler, doing a, doing a wax job on it. So part of the fun of being confined is we're all bored and uh, Ted's out here shining up the fender. Yeah, just put on a second coat of wax right now. Yeah. A little bit more to go, but a second coat of wax. We're getting there. So this side looks a lot shinier than old, say, the hood and, the, and this fender. But uh, as you can see, it's going to look really nice with the uh, with the original patina with just a little wax on it. So uh, he's going to go around the rest of the car a little at a time. It'll look real nice. Mm -hmm. So we've been waxing the old girl and uh, bringing the shine back up to the original paint. Uh, it's actually shining pretty good for. For as bad a shape as it was in, I mean, we got a few areas that are worn through, but that just gives it some great patina. Um, tops come out pretty shiny. Trunk come out pretty decent. Oh, look, you can see my upside down car. See that? That's emergency lights. They come on when the uh, power goes out. The old Grand Prix. Anyhow, uh, coming right along getting pretty shiny I thought we'd do that while we're waiting on the brake parts to come in and uh, then we'll start cleaning the inside the inside's still original uh, material and everything I got the back seat out of it right now but we'll get that back in there the golden lion apparently had lots of power day I got my uh, my brake parts in for the disc brake conversion here's all the propaganda so I got a bag of bolts and we got some new spindle nuts and some spacers and this is the heart of it you can't see them but those are the spindle bushings and then we got the two uh, oh, I'm gonna do all this the two brackets so we'll get this all undone and Start putting it on the car. Stay in there. So this is what comes in the kit from AAJ Brakes. And we'll post a link below here for them. So this is what comes in the kit. Then you buy your uh, rotors and your bearings and the calipers and pads. So this is uh, the first part of putting the disc brake conversion on. And we'll start putting this on. And then we'll show you the rest of the parts needed. Well, we have the, uh, the backing plates on here and bolted on. Uh, the next step would be to put uh, red Loctite on the spindle, and then we have these adapters, and we just push these on and let them get on there and lock on like that. And now we're ready to start putting the, uh, the new rotors and new bearings all back on here. So that step's done, and we'll move on to the next one. Well, I put everything in place just to... Uh, Fit it up, see how it's going to fit. Everything just pushes right on there like it's made for it. Uh, it's going to line up real good. I don't have the brake pads on there yet, but I just wanted to put the caliper on and see how everything was going to line up. So uh, everything's going to work real good. And uh, all you need to do is grease the bearings and start putting it together. So the passenger side is as far as I can go. I don't have the brake hoses yet. Uh, they was back ordered, so I'll get them. Uh, the next day here, but uh, I've got the rotors on, the um, bearings all packed, dust cover on, got the caliper on, pads, ceramic pads on there, got the uh, the bolts all lubed up, 
Uh, so everything slides good, never sees on the threads. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. And the old Chrysler here is gonna, gonna look pretty good with a set of disc brakes on it. Okay, the job's completed. Got uh, everything bolted on, got uh, fluid in the lines, bled the uh, brakes. Uh, Got all the hoses and everything on there. Everything went together real easy. Uh, just a matter of buying the parts, bolting them together. Big thank you to AAJ Brakes, and uh, this they made it really easy. So here's a Cal Custom uh, job that's finished for the Golden Lion. We'll be putting her back together and trying it out. Well, it's another day here at Clef's Garage. You've seen us tear apart the uh, front end and get the disc brake conversion on it. We decided we need to tear apart the back end check the uh, wheel cylinders and we knew it had an issue with the leaf springs and uh, you'll see that here in a minute. I guess there's a reason why this car didn't want to sell at the auction years ago when I bought it because <clears throat> it was a piece of crap. But uh, I'm, I'm going to bring it back to life. I'm, I've just made the determination I'm going to do that so I don't really care what's wrong with it. But uh, we'll try to work on it here today. So we got that bolt loosened up, the nut off of it. Now we're trying to get the U-bolts off of it. We're doing this a little bit different since I don't have a lift. Uh, want that up or down? And we're using the big mo here. Down. And uh, we're gonna get this lined up on the nut and then he's gonna get it loose. Up. Yeah, I do. Pull up. That's good. Go up a little bit. Have fun there, Nate. Yeah. One more to go. Okay, well, you can see we got the U bolts off. And the spring that was broke, it broke the rest of the way. And uh, this is why we're changing this. There was just nothing left of this side. So this is why you should always inspect all your suspension for cracks, broken parts, because you don't want this happen going down the road. So we got the spring out, uh, a little bit of work. It wasn't too bad. Uh, we don't have one of those fancy uh, two-post lifts like most garages have because I just don't have the room and I went like 30 years without one and been able to do everything I wanted to do so you just use a little ingenuity and uh, so you can see this is the leaf spring and now well, when it uh, when it come out it come out in two pieces this is the main leaf this would be bad so this is where it was broke at and uh, you could definitely see that it was broke and then, of course, it was missing three or four other springs. I've got a Mopar buddy of mine that's got another set of these off of a Roadrunner, and we're going to uh, get them and put them back on. We're just doing one side at a time, and uh, we'll get it back together. Well, it's putting back together today. I uh, procured two springs off a good friend of mine. These are off of uh, a Roadrunner. They look like they're gonna fit. We're gonna put them up in there and check everything out. I think I'm gonna be okay. Uh, it's a little dark under here. We had to close the door today. It finally got hot here in Ohio. We've got the air conditioning on in the shop. You can probably hear the noise. But uh, we need a little, a little more light under here. A good friend of mine gave us a, uh, an LED light. And uh, we're going to try that. It even comes with a remote. A remote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that ought to do it. I think I'm ready now to see what's going on. Oh, yeah. See pretty good now. Can you see the light? Did I? Somebody get me a light. I believe it's one of a plan, two of I see. This is the one. Uh, I might have that same wrong. We'll fix it on the on the comments. So we're back again. I've uh, 
put uh, some grease on the bolt, some never sees on the uh, on the studs, and I've got my new pair of sunglasses here because uh, the light's a little bright. Let's see if I can get this in. Well, of course, things aren't going to work out right. We can't get this up in there very good because the bracket's not wide enough. Uh, done some measuring and found out we're not. This ain't going to work because uh, this spring actually isn't long enough. As you can see, uh, the other side hangs straight down. And this side is way up at an angle, so as soon as we put the weight of the car, uh, it's going to go right up through our new trunk pan. And uh, we don't want that, so uh, I guess we're going to take a trip down to the... Hey, there's my thumb. We're going to take a trip down to uh, a couple towns south of us and actually make up new leaf springs. And I guess we'll go that route. You know, always try and save a dollar when you're doing restoration work, and uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Hey, so it's uh, pickup leaf spring uh, Wednesday. So we're going down to a uh, place of business here to pick up our new leaf springs we had made for the, the 59 Saratoga. You know, in uh, some of my other videos, I've made Bugs Bunny references, the cartoon Bugs Bunny. And we do little sle sneaky references there to see if you pick up on it. And uh, the place of business we're going to today, I can't even make this stuff up. Uh, it, it's just right out of the Bugs Bunny playbook. Uh, it's a place where all the anvils come from, and pretty much anything that you order online, because Bugs Bunny ordered online, uh, would be from this place right here. Pan over there and grab this sign here. Yes, yes, it's correct. It is the Acme Spring Heavy Duty Division. I'm pretty sure this is where all the anvils come from. Well, here we are. We're going to get our springs. springs it's unloading time look at these bad boys they're so dang heavy i can't even pick them up let's just give you an idea how big these things are so i'm almost six foot tall these are a good good five foot but uh, yeah these are all new got new ends on them can you see that uh yeah this is going to work a lot nicer let me just put this in over here where it goes So we got all new shackles, all new bolts. Always want to put new uh, new bolts in when you do that. But while we was down there, we even managed to find a, an anvil. Because, you know, Acme sells anvils. <laughs> Bugs Bunny always has uh, anvils. Wiley e. Coyote would drop them on somebody. This here is, uh, this is cartoon size because cartoon stuff is a lot smaller. So we have a bigger anvil over there, but this is cartoon size. We could drop this on, on the road runner. So now she's going to demonstrate the different sounds between a cartoon anvil and a real anvil. Go ahead. So if uh, you heard that ringing sound on the little anvil, that's what's actually bad for your ears is that ringing. That's why you always put them on a wood block to get rid of that ringing sound. This one would do the same thing on the, on the cement. So always wear your ear protection. You didn't have yours on. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't bad. We got it uh, back on there. Basically, you stick that in there, stick a bolt through there. And that goes on the other side. Then you bring it back here and put the, uh, the new shackles on. Probably can't see that because the light's so bright. Put the new shackles on, new bushings, and then we put the, the new U-bolts on and bolt them up. And voila, the trick, she is done. Now we'll do the other side. It looks kind of funky too. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Stay tuned for probably part three of the 59 Chrysler. We'll, we'll get it out and run it and uh, show you this neat little mirror here that's down on the dash instead of up on the windshield. Uh, some of the quirks about this car. Um, so anyhow, that's it for now. Clep's Garage. Be sure to like and subscribe.